I'm gonna make sure my mic. <laughs> hey guys, this is Alexis Sofio, Sofio Leather. Alrighty. So in this video, which is part five, um, we go over assembling the front buckle, the male buckle, adding a hanging pocket, which is a bonus. It's not in your prints, but we'll go over that in this video. Also securing the handle and all the D-rings to uh, the flap and attaching the flap to the back body, as well as, um, uh, I think that's it, yeah. Uh, a male buckle on the front body, the hanging pocket, the handle and the flap securing it to the main body. So all we have left, literally, the next video is gonna be the gusset, bevel and burnish, and some finishing touches. I think we should have one video left. Uh, and it will be a six part series. So I know it's a little lengthy. Um, so with that, also don't forget to download the templates uh, for this build. It is gonna be in the link in the description, the first link up there, as well as a link to all the other, um, all the other patterns, I'm sorry, as well as a link to all the other parts, as well as a link to the whole build series, part one through everything. Um, yeah, so without further ado, God bless you guys and thank you very much and let's get into the video. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take our handle and we're gonna finish assembling this. What we need is piece H, like in Hector. That's these two pieces. All right, piece H. And we're gonna put them in, weave them in like that with two inch and three quarter D-rings, okay? We're gonna go pre-assemble these D-rings. All right, so there's a certain orientation that you need uh, with this. You can assemble this with Chicago screws if you'd like. I like to use brass rivets, so whatever fasteners you choose, that's fine. So there is a top, and then there's a bottom. It doesn't really matter you can rivet it how you like. Um, I like the top stitch, the good stitch to be on top. You can tell by the, uh, the back stitch where I clipped it off. I like that to be in the bottom. This is how I do it, all right? So all we're gonna do is weave piece H through here, through the hole. And let me see, I'm, on, I'm just double checking. Yeah, I do it, I do it backwards. Not backwards, but opposite. It doesn't matter the orientation of the head of this uh, thing here, so that's really up to you. Now you wanna make sure you put the oval side of this D-ring here and not the flat side. You wanna do it like this. All right, and we're simply gonna rivet this in or screw it in, whatever it is that you're gonna be using. Alrighty, so this is what it should look like. Now you wanna make sure that this is straight. You're gonna to wanna to turn it, but don't do that. Make sure it's straight on. And you have the oval part or the arch part going through the loop and not the flat part. If you mess up, you can still kind of manipulate it and get it through there, but you want it to look like this. All right, so we're gonna set this to the side and we're gonna go ahead and rivet the storm flap onto the back panel. So let's go ahead and grab that. All right, so this is where we left off on the last build. We're gonna go ahead and take this off. This is just glued on a little bit in between the holes, okay? So what we're gonna do is take piece I, there should be four of them, I like an indigo, that's a D-ring connectors, and we're gonna be weaving them through this hole and attaching the D-rings. That's what's gonna happen. Okay, it's gonna go just like this. This is already incorporated into the handle and that's just gonna come just like that, all right? So let's go ahead and assemble these two on the outside with piece D like in Delta. I like to use a flat anvil because using this bigger one is gonna be a little bit of a hassle. So this is basically what we're doing here. We're gonna take one of these 
delta and push them in. All right? It's going to look like that. Take your rivet or your Chicago screw. It's going to lay flat like that. That's when you come in here and throw this D-ring through the loop. And yes, it's a little tough. Okay. Let's go ahead and throw this anvil right here. Drop this down. And like I said, you can use Chicago screws, but that is a lot of leather to go through. You're talking about four, four no, five layers of nine outs. You might need like a half inch uh, Chicago screw if you're gonna use Chicago screw. This is a one inch, this is a one inch uh, brass rivet and that's barely poking out. So something to consider. Let's go ahead and rivet this in. Nice and flat. I'm gonna go ahead and work on the outside one now. And then we'll come back and do the handle last. I guess I, I should tell you this is probably a good idea to go ahead and get these molded. That'll make life a little bit easier. Just line up hole to hole and go ahead and try to get this already started to get going, you know. through that hole. On the anvil, throw the D-ring in. Is this a bear? Yes, it is, but I like it to be nice and snug. Now I feel relatively safe that this is not gonna undo itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and follow up these holes here. You, you have to punch this out now. So I'm gonna punch those two holes out now. It just dawned on me that we need piece S like in Sam. We ought to do piece S like in Sam now. So grab your piece S, which is this piece here piece S like in Sam. I believe it's S. I don't have the print with me, but I believe it's S. It's that little piece there, a five ounce piece. All right. That's going to go here. Now, the reason why I added this is really to hold this down more because we're only going to have four rivets here and the middle is going to be open. The glue, I don't trust that the glue is going to hold uh, that middle from coming up. So this is more of a, a nice way of adding rivets. I don't want uh, rivets for no reason. So if I could just add something, a little key loop or something like that, it'll look kind of sharp. So this is basically just holding the middle part of this flap down, even though we glued it. But uh, adding rivets there is gonna really help. So I'm gonna weave this through the bottom here in those two middle holes. And don't forget, these two uh, are gonna be for the handle. All right, let's get the handle going. Now, I like the nice, good part, the finished piece, uh, the top of the stitch, not the back where the, I, I'm, I cut it off. I like that to be on top like this. So as you can tell, the very first one's gonna be easy, right? The second one's gonna be a little bit of a bear. All right, let's take a closer look. All right, so the, that front panel is ready to go. I mean, we are done with this front panel. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the lid and the back panel. Let's look at what that looks like on the inside. You're just weaving it through there, okay. That's what that looks like. Alrighty, 
Let's move on to the next portion, which is going to be the male buckle on the bottom of the front panel. All right. Let me, uh, let me get that squared away. All right. So go ahead and take out piece A, which is your front body, and piece K, like in kilogram, right here. And all we need is the male buckle right here. Let me show you how this is weaved through here. Um, I'm going to mess up because I always forget how it does it. But uh, yeah, I always forget the short. So the short side is going to be on the front, the long side on the back. But I still am unsure how this is done. It plagues me. So this is a, I always get confused on this, all right? So you're going to have, you're going to orient this like this. I mess this up every time. Actually, this is the third time me trying to do this, by the way. I'm not even going to try to act like I know how to do this. All right. Take this longer side, right? There's a short side and a long side. Take this longer side, run it through the opening. All right. So you're left like that. Take this pointed end, run it through that hole. All right. Line up the two holes right here. And there you have it. That is the male buckle. That's how you do that. So go ahead and work this. We're going to undo this because we're going to have to stitch here. We're going to undo this a little bit. And the way we're going to stitch this down here is basically the same way we did um, in part four with the female buckle. We're going to go ahead and make a stitch line and stitch all that in place. But uh, yeah, that's how we're going to do it. And it's basically going to sit like this. Now be careful not to put it in this way. We're going to put it in like this. Ma match those two holes, and that's, that's how it's going to look. All right? So let's go ahead and get this thing stitched up. And I'm thinking maybe, I don't know, an inch worth of stitch, like last time, from the corner, from the corner of uh, that radius where it starts, go up about an inch. Maybe up to like right here, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do that, punch those holes out, and then we'll continue. All right, so I marked, I, I punched these nice holes here, about right where the radius starts, up to about right here. Don't forget to do that on the short side, not on the long side. This is where the front's going to be at. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now we're going to do the same thing like we did in part four, which is we're going to follow it up. I'm going to put a rivet. I'm going to put a rivet through there, and I'm going to go ahead and follow it up to mark the other holes. What I did there was just mark it so that I could punch these holes out as well. I'm going to use an awl because I want that opening to be a little bit bigger, so I'm going to use an awl. And I want these openings to be a little bit better. I'm just following through. Oh, I marked it. Yeah, I want these to be a good size. It'll make the stitching process a little bit easier. Oh, well, I messed that hole up a little bit, didn't I? Wow, that's bad. Well, we're going to have to uh, adapt here. Oh, look at that hole. That's just not good. I'm going to open them up from the back side as well. I think that hole's going to give me a problem. I guess we'll find out together, huh? I'm opening up from the back as well because I always go left hand first. And it's going to make my stitching a lot easier. All right. Second thing is... It's going to come up like this. So we want to make sure that this is nice and square because we're going to mark the holes on the actual body of the bag. I'm going to do it the opposite way because I don't want to mess this up. For me, it's upright. For you, it's not. And I just want to make sure 
that I'm doing this correct. So basically, I'm just putting a weight on it so it doesn't shift on me. I wanna make sure that this is gonna be nice and plumb, you know? I do not want this. These are the little things that take time, but you don't want it to be stitched like that, right? So do what you have to do to make sure this thing is nice and plumb. However you need to do that. Like I said, I don't like eyeballing anything. So this should be plumb as well. It is, so that is good. I'm gonna leave this weight on there and I'm just gonna mark the actual body of the bag. And we're gonna do the same thing and follow up these holes. This is always nerve wracking, by the way. These are the things that could really mess up the whole bag. So it's marked up. I don't know if you can see that. And we're gonna punch those out. I'm gonna use an awl again, because I want these holes to be kind of big. This time we're gonna use a little more caution, not be an idiot. I'm just going into a block of beeswax here. All righty. So now we are good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and weave this through here again, long side through. And all we have to do is stitch all that in place like that. We're gonna stitch it in place like that. You, get, you guys see me do this on part four. What I am gonna do to make life a lot easier is to go ahead and run a Chicago screw in there um, to hold it in place while I stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'll get back to you when this is done. Bye. Alrighty, so that is done. That is stitched on there. And a couple of things I wanna tell you about this is uh, I switched this out and I actually put a rivet in there. But as you're doing it, put something in there that's, that you don't have to commit to just yet that can still swivel as you're trying to find the holes. A Chicago screw, a long one, half inch Chicago screw I put in there just to hold it while I stitched it. And then once it was done, then I exchanged it for a rivet. <clears throat> the reason why I like the rivets here is because it has a flat head versus a Chicago screw has that head and that's gonna scratch up um, your leather once the flap gets on there. So keep that in mind. Also, um, I realized the holes that I made with the awl, that back piece and the actual panel, make those kind of big. Doing this versus the one on part four, which is this one, this one was 10 times easier. It only took me five minutes to stitch all that. So those holes you make with the awl, make those a little bit bigger, all right? So all I did was switch that. I put a rivet in there, so this panel's done. And I just changed this one out from part four from the Chicago screw to actual rivet. Because this is the piece here that's gonna, that will scratch. Because um, it's gonna close like this, right? So you can imagine all that rubbing right here. You don't want the head of that Chicago screw scratching yourself. It's gonna happen a little bit, but less chance with the flat head of the brass rivet. So. With that being said, I mean, we are technically done. All right, we have this, the back whole piece assembly. We have the back assembly and the front assembly. All we have to do is a gusset now. But I have one bonus, one bonus piece for you, and it's not gonna be inside of your prints, but this is the hanging pocket. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, y'all, so this is the bonus hanging pocket. I wanna talk to you a little bit about this pocket. The reason why it's not on your print is because it's completely customizable. But this is where and when in the assembly process that you actually put it on. Let me show you where it goes. It goes on the front panel on the inside. It's gonna go right here, all right? First, let me talk about the dimensions and what you wanna do. 
um, and then we'll talk about actually attaching it and actually attach it. So <clears throat> the, these dimensions here are 12 inches wide and uh, nine inches deep. They're made out of two different five ounces, all right? So you have the, the bottom five ounce here, that is 12 by nine. This one is 12 by seven, all right? This is completely customizable. So you wanna use two five ounce pieces. And if you wanted to make different pockets out of it, you could do another stitch right here and separate the two and you have two different pockets. Um, you could uh, put a scallop here if you wanted to. Uh, you could put a, a snap if you wanted to, a line 24 snap. I just made this kind of just crude like this. As far as the total depth, you don't want to go, you know, past 10 inches. So I think nine inches is good. You can go 10 inches, but that's really close to the bottom of the bag. Uh, as far as the width, as far as this width, I want you to keep in mind that these two holes out here, that's where this piece goes. This is the assist strap. So you're gonna need to access you're gonna to need to be able to access this hole to screw in this piece. So you don't wanna make this thing all the way so long that it covers that up, because then you won't be able to get to it, right? So there's two means of attaching this. Um, you can put it in like this, put two holes and put two rivets and screw it in with Chicago screws like that and you'll have two Chicago screws holding it. What that's gonna do is gonna leave it legit hanging. Uh, you can do that or you can run a stitch across I don't know what I want to do. Um, the rivets are the easy way. We're going to go ahead and make it a little complicated and do it the stitch way. All right, so let me show you what you need to do. First thing we're going to do is actually just scribe a line on the top here. And we're just going to punch this out. Let me get my chair. You do not have to worry about uh, lining anything up just yet, but that's essentially what we're going to be doing. Um, okay, so we're just going to punch this out. Let me punch this out and I get back to you. All right, so there's two ways. I already pre-punched these holes here on this. All right, you wanna center it up. Go ahead and just mark, put it on the front, all right? We're not gonna stitch it like that, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna line this up like this, right? You can take this all the way to the top and make it flush. I wanna come down just a teeny tiny weenie bop, a little bit, just like that, okay? I'm gonna add also, this is a really nice place to put customer's name, uh, brass plate, uh, their initials. Th that'll be really sharp, but that's just a preference. So I like that right there. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little weight on there so it does not move. So there's two ways of doing this. You can easily just count the holes, right? Let me, uh, let me get some, some more weight. I don't want this to shift, you know? I do not want this to shift at all. I'm just putting some weights because I like the location and I do not want it to shift. And I have no more weights. Yep, I do. So you can just count how many holes here and then start, you know, take everything off and then punch that many holes. But I'm gonna do something a little easier and I'm just gonna follow the holes with a pricking iron. This is the same pricking iron thing will zoom. So all I did was mark it. All right. And all I'm going to do now is follow through and punch out these holes. And I am going to punch from the top down so that when we're stitching it on the back, they're going to be, the holes are going to be opposing and it's going to make a really nice stitch. All right, let me get back to you. Alrighty, so I start the stitch and I kind of want to show you, you're just gonna meet up uh, the first hole with the first hole. This bull clamp actually helps big time holding it down in place. And uh, you're just gonna match up if it wants to zoom or focus. This is gonna match up hole for hole, finish stitching it, and then uh, that's it. I'll get back to you when I'm done. All right, so the hanging pocket is done, finished stitched, and this is why it's called a hanging pocket, because it's only held on by that stitch right there. 
about that stitch, these are opposing holes. So these, since we, since we punched the holes from this side and then the other side, they're opposing. You know, they're like that. So the stitches come out extra nice. And that's basically how we're going to do the gusset. But uh, yeah, as far as this video this is done, we'll uh, go out to the outro. Uh, yeah, we'll go out to the outro. Bye. All right. So there you have it. This video, we went over putting on the mail buckle uh, on the front panel, uh, attaching the storm flap and the handle to the back body, um, and adding the bonus hanging pocket. Um, I think the next video is gonna be the last one. I'm not sure, don't hold me to it. Um, but I think all we have to do now is the gusset. And uh, that's it. Gusset, finishing pieces, um, the, little, the little strap on the side, um, which is easy as a couple of screws uh, and beveling and burnishing the edges. So I think we have one video left and that's it. But that's it. That's all I got for you. All right. God bless you guys. Have a good night. Bye. Or a good day, whatever. <laughs>